Hello and welcome to Virus TI Bootcamp. In this episode, I want to take a look at a particular feature of the filter section, uh, namely the analog mode, which is uh, something we introduced to the Virus C series back in 2004. Uh, but it's occurred to me that there's probably a lot of TI owners out there who have never been formally introduced to this rather nifty little feature. So the original inspiration behind the analog filter algorithm was the Minimoog's four-pole ladder filter. Um, however, the way we've implemented this allows us far more flexibility than a straightforward model or emulation would normally provide. But we'll start with a quick guide on how to set the filters up to emulate the Minimoog. First of all, you need to select analog mode like this. And then you uh, need to ensure that the filter routing is set to serial uh, mode, either four pole or six pole. It makes no odds when it's in analog mode. And then there are two ways to achieve the classic four-pole uh, ladder array. Uh, first way is with filter balance set to the uh, central position, like this. And in this case, we need to set filter 1 to the uh, two-pole low pass, and filter 2 to the low pass mode. And this gives us two poles on each filter, and uh, that adds up to the four that we need. Now the other way, uh, and really the better way in my opinion, is to set filter balance all the way to filter 1. And in this case, you need to select the four-pole low-pass mode. And only in this configuration, by the way, uh, with a single filter, can you get the uh, one-pole and two-pole low-pass filters, uh, because otherwise you've always got another two poles uh, from filter two. Uh, so we're, at the moment, this is in uh, Minimoog emulation. Uh, so you adjust the cutoff like you do normally with the other filters, and the resonance here. But you'll notice now that we've got a very different character to, uh, to the resonance, and that's because uh, this actually goes into self-oscillation when you turn up resonance high enough. And that means that the filter itself is producing uh, a tone. Let's take the oscillator signal away completely now. And you can hear that we've got uh, a, a tone coming now from the filters. And you tune that with the cutoff knob. And if you want it to follow the keys a bit, of course, you can add key follow. Um, and uh, but this allows us to get this uh, great interaction, though, between um, the oscillator sound and uh, the, the filter, and you get these really great growly sounds by this, if you if you get the sweet spots right. So let's turn the um, oscillator volume back to the central position. You can hear it there a little bit. It's the interaction between the the two signals. Um, now you can also add some more uh, saturation uh, to this. It's embedded within the filter, so it's always on. You just increase the uh, amount by the uh, oscillator volume slider. But you will notice that that um, it softens the resonance. Um, so you might need to crank that up a little bit. If you've got a lot of saturation, you might want them to uh, turn up the resonance to compensate. And if you uh, really want to be emulating the Minimoog, uh, you can always uh, stick the character uh, to Vintage 1 as well. And that'll sort of add the final layer of polish. Uh, but really, uh, the fun starts with this filter when you start uh, reducing the number of poles. Um, you can take it down to a three-pole filter. Let's just compare again. I actually find the uh, three-pole very good for making bass sounds. Two-pole there, which is uh, I like to use for pads quite often because it just allows a little bit more of the top end through. Keeps them a little bit more lively. And then uh, the real coup de grace, actually, with this one is the one-pole filter. Which is a really fantastic, gnarly, rude, gritty sound. Um, and it's still got self-oscillation. And uh, the, the great thing about this is it's completely impossible in the true analog domain. Um, but it happens to sound fantastic, so... 
Uh, you know, start making uh, sounds with the, the stomp box and the speaker cabinet, and you can get some really brutal effects with that. So here are a few sounds I've made uh, with the different analog configurations. Uh, first up is uh, a three-pole bass patch that's used. Uh, that's based on a, a classic Odyssey sound. I've also used the uh, Mint Stomp Box with this one to help get it closer to the original. And uh, next up is uh, this noise pop sound. Uh, this kind of fell out of the virus while I was uh, messing around with the filters preparing for this video. Um, uh, so I thought I'd share it with you. It's uh, using that pulse width modulation trick from the first video uh, and also exploiting the one pole filter and it, uh, with a lot of saturation uh, and a bit of distortion from a stomp box and uh, you get this great snappy uh, percussive noise sound. Uh, next up is a, a two pole patch uh, that uses uh, the self oscillation. And that uses uh, a little bit of modulation of uh, filter balance here to add a little bit of colour into the sound as well. Uh, and finally, here's a, a sort of gnarly um, one-pole lead sound. Um, and uh, so it's using the one pole and it's uh, going through some effects, uh, including uh, a stomp box and um, speaker cabinet. <laughs> So please download those patches, have a mess around with them. Uh, I hope you find them useful, and uh, I'll see you in the next video.